Hey everyone, welcome to the Eclipse webinar. So good to see you all here. Yes, we are chiming in from everywhere I see, from New Hampshire to Nevada to California, Aloha, Hawaii, um, Arlington, Reno, everywhere. Okay, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, California, Lisbon, Richmond, Colorado, France, Seattle. Great to see everybody in the room. We are definitely gathered here for an important event today. Um, and of course, we have a lot of people here from New York City. So welcome. I will not forget our New Yorkers. Welcome, New Yorkers, too. Welcome, everyone. Yes, um, Phoenix, Western New York, all of you. Okay, so to start things off, uh, I was not going to originally do this Eclipse webinar, but listening to all of you, listening to my clients, listening to the DMs over the last week, I said to myself, I have to do this. I have to show up and really talk about the meaning of this Eclipse because it is just too big to pass over. And um, for those of you that are not familiar with Eclipses, it is so important to understand Eclipse mechanics and how they operate in your life. Because this will really invite you to look at time in a very different nonlinear way. Okay. So yeah, it, it really is in terms of the evolution of, of your soul. We're going to explore the meaning of eclipses here. All right. Um, now, before we go any, any further into this, I do want to mention, I want to mention for all of you that want to learn astrology, that are interested in becoming an astrologer, or perhaps you want to simply learn it as a hobby. I have been teaching an astrology course for about 20 years. I only host it once a year. This might be the last year I do it live. It starts in about a week. If you'd like to learn and you're here today, if you type in the promo code Eclipse, if you type in the promo code Eclipse for the beginner's astrology class, every one of you will get an extra seminar called Moon Magic. So you will get an extra whole course with that. If you join and type in Eclipse, that will come with your order. I just want to say that. I'll talk more about that at the end. Um, so you can certainly ask me questions on that later. Um, but let's begin with this Eclipse magic. Okay, let me share my screen with you all. And we'll start. Okay. All right, you should you all should be able to hear my hear me, right? Everybody can hear me and see the screen. Eclipse season 2023 and what it means for you. We are going to be diving deep into these eclipses coming up. The overall mechanics of eclipses, their karmic meaning, and of course how it impacts all of you, all of the signs of the zodiac, what this 18-year sorrow cycle is all about. And I'll just mention this again, those of you that do want to learn astrology, the course that I only offer once a year is coming up starting next week. So uh, it is very well priced, all of that. You can be a certified astrologer, or you could simply take it in your own way at your own pace. You can come to all the lives. There are so many ways to do that course. That begins next week, and you can type in the promo code Eclipse, and you'll get another whole course along with it. Okay. So let's begin with eclipses. First, I want to dive into the mechanics of an eclipse because I started studying astronomy actually way before astrology. And when you understand the astronomical mechanics of eclipse, you can really more deeply understand the metaphysics of an eclipse. So I like to ground this all in the earth, in the mechanics of what's actually going on on planet earth. Okay. And so what we see here is a solar eclipse at the top, and what's down there is a lunar eclipse. Eclipses happen twice a year. Essentially, a solar eclipse is an extremely magnified version of a new moon. So you're going to see at the top, here we have the sun in direct alignment with the moon, and then the earth. That pure stream of energy only usually happens twice a year. And that is called a solar eclipse is what it's basically when a new moon gets in exact alignment. 
That is rare. Okay. Now that's going to be on October 14th. And I'm sure everybody in this room right now can feel the plates moving beneath your feet, right? You you can feel, I'm sure, that your life is about to change significantly. Perhaps it already has in the last week. Things are starting to jostle in their places. And you're probably starting to think, okay, things are not going to be the same next month. Take a snapshot of your life right now. Because after an eclipse, things are not the same. Okay. That's a solar eclipse. A perhaps tenfold magnified version of a new moon. Now, the lunar eclipse below is a very magnified full moon, essentially, and that only happens twice a year. So you see how the sun is first, and then the earth, and then the moon on the other side. And so that's when you see this dark reddening of the moon. Everything goes completely black for a moment. It has this very ominous feel. It's a very different energy than a solar eclipse. So like back in the ancient world in Mesopotamia, whenever there was a lunar eclipse or solar eclipse, everybody would really get quite frightened because it would seem like their reality was ending. And in a way it was, there was usually an end of a certain regime or ruler or like a takeover from another village. There was always something going down on an eclipse as there still is today in your life. Like now you might be um, releasing a relationship or letting go of a job or um, grieving somebody who's passed. You know, there's sometimes there are these big rites of passage that we go through and we always have gone through historically since the beginning of time on eclipses. And that is because you are the heavens, the heavens are in you. So when there's an eclipse up there, it's also happening in the interiority of your inner life, right? It's also happening because you are the sun, you are the moon, you are the earth, you are all of that. So when there's this really dramatic thing going on up there and the whole sky goes black, there is the switch off inside of you. And when things go back on, they're on a new frequency. Got it? Is everybody with me here? So what's happening? That's how astrology works. This is based, the basic mechanics of astrology. The drama up in the heavens is the drama that's happening inside your soul. And there is essentially no difference. Everything breathes together. The planets do not make you do things but everything happens concurrently. So we're going to begin today by really diving into first the mechanics of a solar eclipse, because that is what is upon us in two weeks from now, right? And I think you all are already feeling that. I want to see a show in the chat, right? The word eclipse. If you are already feeling the drama, the changes of the plates moving beneath your feet, right? The word eclipse. Who is feeling this already? Okay. So many of you. That's what I'm talking about. Yes. And those of you that are not feeling it yet, you will. You will within the next two weeks. So essentially, these dramatic events, these ripples in time, they happen in the sky because it's the universe's way of making corrections. In other words, Sometimes our humanity, our minds, our emotions, our, our stories, we get we get spiraled out from what our soul came here to do. And essentially what an eclipse will do is it will boomerang your mind, your body, all these parts of you back to your soul intent. And sometimes when it does that, <laughs> it can feel like you're getting dragged across the rocks. All right. If you've gone way off from where you need to be, sometimes it's like, ouch, 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 we're getting dragged. And other times it can be more graceful. But when you study astrology and when you really learn about eclipse patterns, you will start preparing. And that way they are actually more graceful and easy and less getting dragged across the rocks. Um, okay. So I see people that are like resigning from work and all these things. Yes. We're going to talk about the Saros and Metonic cycles, all the good stuff. Yes. 
All right. So I want to mention the Ouroboros here because this is an ancient symbol of the dragon eating its own tail that you've probably seen quite often. I think a lot of people have it on tattoos and things like that, right? But the deeper meaning of the symbol is an eclipse. So when the dragon catches up to its own tail, essentially it's the ripening of karma. It is symbolic of when the nodal axis, when the sun and moon catch up to the nodal axis, the dragon catches up to its own tail. In other words, that's analogous to saying um, the happenings of your life, the sun and the moon, um, catch up to fate, the nodes of the moon. And that's when corrections are made. And that's what is happening right now. So this symbol throughout history essentially is usually um, endemic of an eclipse. And you can see all sorts of writing in the background there. Now, eclipses come in families. Okay. Um, we're going to talk about your relationships, your jobs, all the things that are changing for each sign of the zodiac. So please do stick around to the end. If you want to know what's going on for every sign, every rising sign, we are going to go deep into the eclipse stories for each one of you. This eclipse family, eclipses come in families, and these families initiate at one point and they have an end. And this tells a story like an accordion through time. It kind of ripples through moments of time that are all strung together by an eclipse family. So we're talking right now, an eclipse family is what's called a Saro series. This one here, you're going to see on my left screen, I'm just going to highlight something for all of you right now. This is the solar eclipse in Libra. That is about to happen in two weeks, okay? And that's what you all are feeling right now. You're also probably feeling this lunar in Taurus too. But I want to talk to you first about the meaning of the solar eclipse in Libra. That sets the, the entire tone for your year and perhaps many, many more years to come. Now, the ancients knew when there was a solar eclipse, there would probably be a new leader coming into power and an old leader falling away from power. It would usually signify also a change in the organizing principles of life, a change perhaps in the crops. All of these things were up for extreme reversal and changing of pattern. They are here to break the patterns and make corrections. Now, because this one is in Libra, it sets the tone for the year ahead, and it talks about how we will all need to change our patterns significantly when it comes to relationships, the way we relate and how we relate, and all of your relationships on planet Earth, all of the ways that you relate to your friends, your family, and especially your most intimate relationship if you have one, all of those are up for a big review cycle right now. And there's no way, there's no way that any of us can get out of eclipse season with skipping a step here. Like we have to face our stuff. There is no way that anybody will, will move through this and not make the changes because it's like this if you don't make the changes they will get made for you <laughs> repeat that after me if you don't make them they will get made for you and it's better sometimes that you pay heed and you feel the wind current moving and you start to loosen the grip on what was allowing for these changes to happen is absolutely key now who in the room already feels that your, their deepest relationship is going through this big rite of passage, that your relationships are changing. Just write in the chat the word change, change, if you can already feel that. I'm curious who is already feeling that their relationship has to change, that there's no way it can go on the way it is anymore. Okay, I see like, like, like tens, almost like a, dozens and maybe almost close to a hundred people saying the word change already. Will that... Some people are even saying crisis. Yeah. So this is a time when your relationship, your closest relationship is up for a big review cycle. 
not only does the relationship have to change, but your relationship to relationships needs to change. And so does theirs, probably. All of this. Because Earth, like life is about evolution, right? We are in this soul double helix moving through space. Our sun is moving through space, always moving through new points of evolution. And if we don't evolve with it, we get dragged, okay? Now is an opportunity to upgrade your way of conducting relationships. We're going to talk about what that means. Because this eclipse is conjunct the south node of the moon, I'm sorry to say this, but what you all will need to be doing is actually taking an honest review, like a survey of your past relationships. And it will probably help you a lot to literally just like write down, write down the storyline, see your part in the play, understand the patterns you have been in, whether you jump into things quickly or you don't end them properly or you hold on too tightly or you suffocate or you or you are an avoidant or an attacher or whatever your story is. We need to be able to first see that story. This eclipse is conjunct the south node. And that means that you will have to like shake up the Christmas globe and see what comes up from the bottom of the ocean before moving forward. Okay, we cannot bypass here. All right, folks. So as you see your stories, honesty is key first. And moving forward, what's going to happen is that storyline is going to deeply change. Change is not comfortable. That's why a lot of people don't like a eclipse season because um, it's kind of like this. I'm going to come back to the mechanics of the eclipse right here because that's going to explain this next part best to you. I'm going to go back. Hold on. Back to here. Okay. The sun, the moon, the earth. What happens during an eclipse, a solar eclipse, which is this eclipse in Libra, which is about relationships coming up, the eclipse you all can feel right now. What's happening there on um, a mechanical level is that the moon is blocking the light of the sun. In order to really understand what this means on a metaphysical level, I'm going to explain what the sun is first on a metaphysical level. The sun emits light. Light is a frequency. Light encodes information. Light encodes codes. The sun is broadcasting a signal to our solar system all the time. It's broadcasting a signal of information, of light codes that we are all continually moving to on planet Earth. Somewhat unconsciously, we're just like speaking our languages, we're doing our things. We're like, yeah, this is what life is about. And like Sirius is a sun that blasts out different codes. You know, Thuban has different codes. Every star, every sun blasts out different frequency and different codes. So people living in those solar systems are going to have different kinds of ways of being, right? So our sun is blasting out a light frequency that's encoded information. Okay. We're all moving to those beats. We're, we're doing our things. We're like, yeah, kind of unconsciously. Now, now, the moon twice a year blocks the light of the sun. It turns the freaking radio off. It's like, uh -uh, no more, no more. It literally turns it off. It gets shut down. It's, it's done. Kaput. Okay. So now like you've unplugged the internet, there's no power source. There's no plug anything. Um, like seven minutes later or whatever, the, the eclipse will be over. Right. And within those seven minutes, there's this whole process of like, like unplugging everything, letting it reset. And then when the eclipse is over, you know, seven or 12 minutes later, the sun is going to turn back on our radio signal is going to come back, but it's going to be different. In fact, it will never be able to go to the old frequency that it was at prior because it's gone. And it's like this, it's like you're walking across the cliff and you have to cross a really scary bridge. You're going to have to cross that bridge in eclipse season. And then the bridge is going to fall into the water and it's gone. And you're never going back. There's no turning back. 
That's what happens when there is an eclipse. That radio station can no longer be found. That frequency channel, you cannot go back to where you were. Now, it's very strange what happens because it's almost on a cellular level. You might have been in a job for so long, and maybe there wasn't even that much that was wrong there. It could even be that you just like go one day and you're like, this is not right anymore. What am I doing? Or you've been in a relationship so more for so long, and then you go to meet and you're like, this doesn't even make sense. The codes have changed. I, I'm not in alignment with any of this anymore. Is anybody here listening with me? Does this all make sense? Because the sun is now at a new frequency. That's what happens during an eclipse. In order to understand why that happens, you have to understand the role of the moon, okay? The moon is a memory. It's like a hard drive. And it travels around planet Earth collecting information, collecting, collecting. You know, every day the moon makes its its whole rotation, right? So the moon, um, I'm sorry, the Earth travels on its axis and then the moon moves through all the signs in a moon, a month, right? Now, the moon is a collector. So when the sun and moon come in this interface, as they do during an eclipse, they have a little combo there. The moon is like, hey, this has been going down on planet Earth. This is the evolution of everybody tr transmits information to the sun. The sun says, all right, I'm changing the station. And then everybody has a new frequency of light. That is why after an eclipse, you kind of cannot go back to that old thing, that old pattern, that old habit. It's not even available to you. And if you try, you will get stopped. You want to challenge these? Go ahead and try. I've tried personally to challenge eclipses. There's been times where I was like, oh, but I like that job. I'm just going to go, even though I know it's over. I know it's just not right for me. And things got in the way, even just trying to get there. I was literally just stopped. And at some point, you have to realize, you know, there's something bigger at work here. And eclipses are extremely humbling in that way. It is when we realize how small we are and how much we are part of this karmic evolutionary play that we have to give more credence to. Like we can't just keep walking around thinking our, our egos are running the show and all of our big hopes and dreams. I mean, that's all great. But there's also something bigger here is that our souls come here for a certain kind of evolution and eclipses happen to make us very aware of the evolutionary intent of our soul. All right. I'm going to have a look at some of your um, comments here. So many comments. Um, yeah. Okay. So I see some of you are saying that you literally had to unplug the internet and everything too. And Yeah the bridge falls into the water. Yeah, exactly. So that's what happens during a solar eclipse. Those are the mechanics. Those are the metaphysics of it. Does that make sense to everybody here? That's what's going on. So when we see this whole eclipse in Libra, we know that we are starting a new quality of love in our life. We are starting a new kind of relationship, a new way you will be relating to your family, a new way you will be relating and connecting to your partner, perhaps, or, or future partner, or friendships. All of that is to be up for review and changing. Now, if you want to get greater insight on this eclipse, look back to 2005, early October 2005, Okay, and I want you all to take a moment and think back to then, because that's when this eclipse last resonated. All right, just think about that for a second. Um, the next eclipse, that's two weeks after, the lunar eclipse. Now, this lunar is in the Taurus family. And it is a five degrees Taurus. The first one is 21 Libra. And this is ending, ending, ending the Taurus eclipse family that you've been in for about two years. Um, and it's basically going to say, okay, um, it's a very different mechanic at work here. It's more emotional, like the solar is starting a new cycle. And we can even say there's lore that says however many minutes the eclipse lasts is how many years the solar lasts. But the lunar is different. The lunar is an ending to a long time pattern you have been in. 
And that ending has to do with the sign of Taurus. So we could say the way in which you hold on to the earth, the way in which you hold on to things, something like that is up for review. And it's going to it's going to resonate for each of you in a different area of your chart. But that might be more of an emotional ending too. It's very possible that you felt the solar eclipse on September 14th and around September 14th, because even the eclipse is October 14th. Some of you will have felt it a month to the day earlier, September around September 14th. And some of you will feel a month to the day later, which is November 14th. So just note that solar eclipse in Libra will, all, like all eclipses do, will resonate a month to the day earlier and a month to the day later. Yeah. Next thing here, um, we're going to notice that the lunar eclipse, similarly, October 28th, will have just resonated two days ago or something like that, right? On um, September 28th. Okay, so note the events around September 28th. You were letting go of something, perhaps something that you had held dear, a pattern, something that had been playing out in your life for so long. Maybe you let go of that a couple of days ago. Anyone, anybody here had that happen? That lunar eclipse might have started working on you early. That often happens. Mary says, yes, September 14th, her started to work. All these people are saying, yes, the lunar eclipse started to work already two days ago. You started to release something. I just got a text message from somebody who was, who's, um, unfortunately, her animal uh, passed over two days ago on that eclipse. And, you know, sometimes eclipses are times when, um, when we cross over, um, when, when with things are, if, if people or animals are at that point, an eclipse is often what kind of like set, sends us over the edge because it's just kind of like a release into the vastness. Um, and it's a release from suffering and pain and challenge often. So Stephanie says she's been at her corporate company for 18 years and and now she's leaving. <laughs> well, that's a, that's a serious eclipse cycle. Yeah, right. And sometimes it's on that exact day, but around these Okay, so that, so again, October 28th, related September 28th, and it will again, November 28th. So you want to think of these like notes on a piano, like if you do high C, it will also echo low C. I mean, if you do middle C, it'll also echo low C and high C, you know, it's kind of like that with these dates. Um, okay. All right. Are y'all ready for more? Um, oh, no. Somebody said their daughter's dog just died. I'm so sorry. Um, if some of you are feeling like you've been in limbo, like I'm seeing here in the chat, if that has been the case, eclipses will knock you out of that limbo land rather quickly. Yeah. All of you that are in limbo, you're about to get out of limbo, whether you want it or not. So many people are in limbo. I want to say to all of you that are in limbo here, how comfortable are you with releasing the grip on things working out in this way or that way or having any kind of like say on it? Because sometimes things are in limbo too because like a part of us really wants things to be a certain way. And eclipses actually will encourage you to release the grip completely. Yeah. I mean, I was I was talking to so many clients over the last month about this releasing of the grip. Let's see. Um, I'm gonna dive into a little more of the nuance of the secrets. Um yeah, of course, Steve, you're right. It's more powerful if it falls within a few degrees of a planet in your chart. Absolutely. Um now some basic rules for eclipse season is that take more time where you're not having like planned activities. You're going to need to process what's going on. And eclipses like space, they like time. They need room to work their magic. I do not want to see you planning like a back-to-back -back slammed October. 
like take a bath, let the lesson sink in, you know, take a walk, journal, if you're into that, or meditate or whatever it is you need to do to create the space so e- so you can receive your eclipse lesson and make the changes. Change needs space and time. Here's the thing. If you don't take the space and time, an eclipse doesn't care. It's going to run over this stuff anyway, but it's just going to be a little messier then. So it's better you create the space and time for this change to actually unfold itself. Yeah. And it's interesting. Yes, it's also autumn. You know, yes, it's a time of change as well. Um, okay, so many comments here. Do they affect health? They can make you a bit more tired. Yeah, because it's a lot happening. You might feel a bit depleted. Some people might feel really energized. It depends on how it's affecting your health. Yeah. Those of you that are Libras and Aries and Taurus and Scorpio, well, you all are very affected. Something that you should note about this solar eclipse as well. Overall, it is a good eclipse. It speaks about a new beginning that must happen, that needs to happen. And it talks about the power dynamic changing in relationships. Necessary is that the power dynamic changes. And um, it's a new way of relating moving forward. Again, it harks back to 2005. The lunar eclipse talks about a releasing, releasing of the grip of all we were holding onto in a certain way of wanting things to be a certain way, um, security wise for our egos and all of that. That lunar eclipse has a has um kind of like the October 28th, September 28th, it kind of has a freeing ending as it's conjunct Jupiter. So like if you do have a pet that's crossed over around this time or something like that, know that they're kind of set free. They're opened up into the vastness. It's conjunct Jupiter, which is an opening after that opposition to Mars and Mercury, which was quite a lot of struggle. Um, So this is like after a lot of struggle and challenge, the September 28th, October 28th, whatever it is, you are freeing yourself after a long time challenge and struggle. And it could have been a relationship, a career, something like that. Somebody says they're moving um, after having lived in this place for 10 years. Wow. Um, Yeah, our Aries are deeply affected. All right, folks. So every 18 years, the same Saro Seeker cycle repeats itself every 18 years. The Saro cycle was discovered by the Chaldeans who observed the lunar cycles repeat themselves every 6,585 days. Now, any two eclipses separated by one Saro cycle share similar geometries. They occur at the same node of the moon, etc. Now, I want you to know that these Saro cycles are every 18 years, and they are what karmically string your life together. So you can look to every 18 years and you're going to see a very similar pattern occur. You can also look at this 19-year cycle called a metonic cycle. Now, the 19-year cycle is more so technical related to degrees. So every 19 years, the eclipse will be about the same degree. So we could say this relates to 2005 in the 18-year cycle and also 2004 in your 19-year in cycle, okay? So I want you to think back to both years now, 2004 and 2005. So here we go. Saros cycle, and now Saros is our cycles that... I work with the NASA website to attain um, and the October 14th eclipse, the, the big solar is part of a cycle called 134. We're going to dive into that Saros cycle. And the lunar is part of Saros cycle 146. Okay. So we can see how long a Saros cycle lasts, right? From like 1248 to 2510. These cycles last thousands of years. They are huge. 
monoliths, right? So um, what's really interesting to do um, is that Stephanie's kind of referring to here in the chat is you can look at the chart for the first eclipse of the Saros cycle. And I often do this on the NASA website. And that, that gives you the sort of blueprint of what this eclipse cycle is about. So 1248. Now what we're going to see um, here, where the eclipse also shows itself on the planet can also be important. So October 14th, 2023. Before that, think back to around October 3rd, 2005. Before that, in Saros cycle 134, think back to September 23rd, 1987. And I know for some of you, you weren't even born yet. <laughs> That's okay. But if you can go back to those cycles, and I want to see in the chat, do any of you see echoes in your life from those times showing up now? Because here's how you can approach it. Back then, you might not have the wisdom that you do now, right? So like in 2005, you perhaps were given an opportunity and similar to what's going on now, and maybe it was challenging and grueling and you weren't as awake and aware as you are now, but yet you moved through it and you evolved. Now you're given a similar set of symbols as you were in 2005. And now that you know what this is about, you will have the opportunity to approach this with more lucidity more courage and clarity to release where you need to and begin where you need to. Um, and you can even go back to 1987 if you if you want here. All right. Yes. So now you can approach it differently. I'm seeing so many people in the chat who are were making major life changes then. Got married in 87, relocated in 2003. Husband got transferred 2005. Amazing. Okay. The chat is wild in this place. Okay. So let's shift to lunar eclipse now. So we went from solar eclipse, which is resonating on the 14th of October, to lunar eclipse, which is resonating on the 28th. Lunar eclipse, Saros cycle 146, resonates from 1541 to 2893. That's how long the family lasts in time. Yes. So we're going to see here, you can go back to October 28th, 2023. No, I remember what was happening in my life between early October and late October in um, 2005. Sorry, October 17th, 2005. Between then and October 3rd, 2005. I gave my first astrological talk at Cosm, which was Alex Gray's art gallery in Chelsea. That was the first time I spoke publicly about astrology. I was only 24 or 25 years old. I was so young back then. And I couldn't believe I was getting asked to speak at this big gallery opening of a new show there. And um, yeah, that talk changed my life. And that's the power of an eclipse. Like it was in my third house, which is of communications. And so it awoke my Pluto, the power of the voice, the power of this transmission and resonance. So perhaps that is when my calendar opened up for the first time and people started asking me for readings after that day. And that was October of 2005 the last time we had these eclipses. So by me knowing that, I'm very aware that right now there is a challenge, rise up to the challenge for a new form of communication to bring out into the world. I'm not sure exactly how that's going to look. I have some ideas right now. This is an example. I want you all to think back into what was happening in your life in October of 2005. That's my story for then. And granted, there were also much more challenging things, but I remember the drama around it and the challenge around it as I was completely petrified about speaking in public. And, you know, I really had admired Alex Gray's art and everything like that. And I was so surprised they were asking me to speak at the gallery. 
So it was like this huge shock and an awakening of my third house. Um, and in 1987, we moved and that was a big move that really changed the way we saw the world. So what happened with you then? Let's see. Um, seeing all of the comments here. Great. Now, also, you can, even though they weren't the same Eclipse family, you can go back to 2013 to 2015, because those years were actually, um, 2013 to 2015 were uh, Aries Libra eclipses, even though they were not part of this Eclipse family. So you might also want to look into what was happening then in your life. 2013 to 2015, there will be something big there. And I can tell you in the same Eclipse family, because it's my third house, ninth house, 2015 is when I published my first book. So for me, all of these Aries Libra eclipses have to do with the communication axis, speaking in public, 2005, 2015, publishing my first book. So that's because it's my third, ninth house axis. For all of you, that axis is going to be in a different place in your chart. Okay. Well, this, now, if some of you say it was like one of the worst times, don't think that this is going to be one of the worst times because 2013, 2015 is a completely different cycle, but there was something there. There was some kind of pattern that you will meet again and you will approach it differently, but it's something of a similar resonance. Okay. You have an opportunity now to do things differently. A new moon is a tidal wave where you must have courage, a solar eclipse, a trust. There's an unexpected opportunity, a fresh start. A full moon lunar eclipse is when the tide pulls in after the tidal wave. It is about endings, really trusting the path and releasing. So 2023, this is the beginning to 2025 is when your whole Aries Libra axis will be activated. This is just the beginning. We're going to dive deep into that. So what did you learn in 2005? What did you learn in 2015? More so, we are saying goodbye to the Taurus Scorpio axis. So you might consider what lessons did you learn the last two years as the eclipses moved through Taurus and Scorpio. Take a moment and notice what houses Taurus and Scorpio rule in your chart. Notice how far you came in those houses. Notice how far you've gone from 2021 to 2022 because you have been working hard on that axis. Anybody want to share in the chat? What have you, what are you proud of that you have, how much have you evolved on that Taurus Scorpio axis over the last two years? It might have been challenging for sure. There might have been deep lessons. But I will really want to invite you to see this past as instead of a whole lot of like, anecdotal experiences and things that happened but how you see the past is how what creates your future the lens you put on your past is your future and i feel it's really important to be able to see your past also from the lens of your the lens of the teacher the lens of evolution in other words how was each event that happened to you over the last two years a teacher and how did it take you from here to here to here to here even though they might have been challenging it is so important that you're able to see the teacher woven through each experience because if you don't do that and you just see it as a whole lot of misadventures then your future becomes a whole lot of misadventures because it's your lens that creates your reality right are you all with me here your lens is everything. 
Okay. So, yes. Okay, I see the Taurus Scorpio lessons coming through. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Notice those lessons. Notice the hardships, but notice how you overcame them. Because now we're moving on. It's so important to have closure. Instead of seeing those last two years as, oh, that was hell, that sucked, that was bad, whatever. No, okay, <laughs> I get all that. But I need you to lift yourself up from that story. And notice how the teacher was woven through. What did you learn from that experience? What did you learn from that? And how did all of these experiences evolve you? You invited all those experiences into your life. They're all part of you. They're all part of your karma. How did each one teach you? Okay, I'll move on. Good. Notice the lesson. Yes. Um, now we come into this Aries Libra axis and I just want to give you an example. I'm going to share the screen. I'm going to like show you an example of how I would look at this in a chart. Okay. So here you see my solar fire, my trusty little solar fire screen, right? And I have a chart right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just, um, put that eclipse on a chart. So I'm going to go like this and I'm going to see now, hold on, wait, 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 flywheel, sorry, flywheel. Here we go, folks. We're going to do this October 14th. There we go. So you see how this person here, you see how this person has the solar eclipse here in their sixth house at Libra, you can see that, right? So you can see for them, it's very much about their health, their daily routine, all of those sorts of success things. But I want you to also notice how their lunar eclipse here was in their 12th house, right? So you can see this person how to deal with the sixth 12th house axis on those. And of course you wanna notice if it's on any planets and things like that too. Okay. Um. Coming back here. I will look at your Q&A questions in just a bit. Um, so this Aries Libra is mainly about how you assert yourself and how you engage with others. What are your drivers in life? What motivates you to move forward? And I want just to all kind of consider how we have like relationships historically have been sort of more necessary because we relied on each other much more like in villages and things like that throughout history we were much more intimate on a daily basis because we had to be and in modernity we're really quite separate from each other like because we can be and that's sort of deemed as you know evolution or a good thing or whatever like we've become more separate you can sit at your home and order everything on prime and you never have to see the grocer or go outside or do anything which like reality has really separated us like the all the advances from each other and so these eclipses actually invite you into new ways of connecting new patterns of relating with one another that will be necessary in my opinion for the health of our species, for the social health of our species, we need to re-engage socially and collectively in new ways. This Eclipse series, this family, this Aries Libra family we're in right now very much speaks about the dire need to re-engage with our communities, to re-engage socially and to not be in such bubbles anymore. There's a bigger message about that coming in with this Eclipse family. Um. And that's more collective too. So, you know, you can find the eclipses in your birth chart and how they affect your life, your sun and rising. We'll dive into that. <laughs> Are you all doing okay? Do you need a break? I'm going to take a little water break right now. Hold on, I'm going to have a sip of water and we'll continue. But while, while we're breaking here for a second, you can think about, you know, go back um, to your photos on your phone, maybe. And if you, if you have any 2005 or, you know, or just like memories, 
from these times, 2013 to 2015, especially 2015? Um, that's great. Some of you are still really, that's good. Um, so 2005 is, um, so many people made big changes then people made big changes in 2013 to 2015 too. Wow. So the question is now based on the patterns that showed up, then you will see a similar opportunity coming up. How do you want to invite this into your life? Knowing that there will be similar symbols. I think that eclipses really allow you to wake up houses of your chart that have been dormant or sleeping. So like, let's say you have no planets in a house. Like you have no planets in your second house, let's say. And now there's an eclipse there. You can really wake up matter. You're going to turn all the lights on. Now, I'm going to tell you a little secret too. Solar eclipses can also end things in your life. Like the October 14th is a solar eclipse. It's putting so much freaking light on. It's turning all the lights on. A new quality of light that's shining so bright. It's going to shine so bright that anything that is not in alignment is going to stick out like a sore throb, thumb. Whether that be an old habit, an old kind of relationship or career or health pattern it's going to become so evident because all the lights turn on around September 14th and especially October 14th. So that's why a solar eclipse sometimes will end something as well, because it will have to end that thing in order to roll out the new beginning. Like the new beginning cannot start without an ending. And sometimes we need to kind of clear out the basement first. Once all the lights are on, we need to see what's been lurking down there that should not be there anymore eclipses are about sacrifice like you have to first clear the way to make room for the new to enter you know so great lisa doesn't have planets in your second house maybe that's where the eclipse is um maybe you know so notice what house it's in that's where the action is going to be in your life in that libra house for the next two years um Good. So let's do this. Okay. Before we got, dive into all of the signs, I just want to remind everybody here that you can still use the, um, the code Eclipse if you would like to study astrology in our full year certification program. It is beginning in about a week. And you can put the code Eclipse in right now, and you will also get access to Moon Magic, which is a whole other course that we offer. So that is available right now. And this is our signature course begins next week. I just want to give that another little announcement. Um, as some of you have been asking, okay, we will dive into each one of your charts now. I'm going to start with the sign of Aries. Okay, we're going to go through the Zodiac now starting with Aries. So for Aries, what we can see, and when I say Aries, when I say whatever sign, I want everybody who is that sun or rising sign, just to write your sign in the chat, just write the word Aries. If you're sun or rising, just write Aries. So who am I talking to now? Aries. Who are my Aries? Good. Welcome Aries to the room. Excellent. All right. So what we're going to see here for Aries is that this is about partnership. You might be in a partnership, you might not be. Either way, you are. the lights are all turning on and you are now ready to thoroughly evolve this partnership or move on. But things will not stay the same and they cannot stay the same. They cannot stay the same any longer. There must be change in evolution and lights turn on in partnership. Now, if you're single, this sets the tone for the year ahead. And you'll probably meet a partner this year. This is a big year for partnership for you. You're ready. You're ready to evolve. Think about it this way. Wherever an eclipse is in your chart, it's like we can compress like 20 years of life into one. 
So like all that would happen in a 20 year marriage might happen in one year if there's an eclipse in your house of partnership and marriage. And that's what's going on for our Aries right now. Okay. Yep. That's right, Aries. Okay. <laughs> um, and we're releasing the Taurus Scorpio axis. So Aries is also releasing old money stories to make room for new financial outcomes, releasing an old form of security, releasing a way of perhaps playing small and not stepping up into all of the talents that you have. So Aries, you're releasing something that's been going on the last two years. You're finally going to release that thing. All right. Artorians here. So for Taurus, this is about the way you treat your body and you, the, the fact that your body is, is related to your mind. What you put in your body matters a lot. Taurus, it is time to be more mindful of your body. Um, what you're starting this year is a new kind of routine for yourself, a better way of treating your body, not only on a level of health, but also of like, um, the, how you work, how you do things. Maybe you could work smarter. There's just better ways to move through the day. Meanwhile, Taurus, this is your year. It's a really big year for you. You have Jupiter and Uranus in your sign with the lunar eclipse. But for the last two years, you've had eclipses in your relationship access, Taurus. And I don't know, if you've been in limbo land, Taurus, about a relationship for two years, this is the time. This is the final, final, final eclipse in your relationship axis where you must, you must be honest with yourself, okay? And it has to do with you releasing a layer of self, lunar eclipse in Taurus, you being more truthful and radiant, so, so, so that you can invite in a relationship that is more aligned and fitting. Now, it might be your current partner, but you're perhaps just setting a new way of being. You need to be more honest with yourself here. It's a really good year for you. You have Jupiter in your house of self. Who's a Taurus, Taurus rising in the room? Wendy said, totally already started two new ways of caring for my body this month. All right, you are on it, Taurus. Love that. So you can all write in if you have Taurus, sun, Taurus rising. Hey, Alyssa Snow, Taurus rising. I miss you. Okay. Gemini, 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 sun, Gemini rising. Let's write in your sun, write in your rising, whatever you are. For Gemini, this is about opening your heart to love, to true love. Also, this sets the tone for your entire year, as does this solar eclipse for every sign. Not only opening your heart to true love, but it has also to do with opening up yourself to new creative endeavors opening yourself up to more joy, having more fun, knowing that life can actually be easier than you thought. Okay, Gemini, this is juicy. But in order to do that, you got to take out the trash. There are some, some stories that have been running in the background in your mind. It's like, it's like, yeah, like old programs, right? You, you got to clear the slate. You, Gemini, you've got to notice what might be holding you back and I think it's a thought pattern I think it's a inner thought or emotional pattern you've been in for so long and it's just not a fit for you anymore you've outgrown it you're gonna be fine you can let it you can let it go Gemini you can let that go and you can open your heart you can trust this time okay that's what I got for you all right who are my Gemini Gemini risings um that's great, Gemini. Wow. All right. Are you all ready for that, Gemini? Did your world already shake up with love? Um. Okay, nice. It will. Okay. So we are going to move into the sign of cancer right now. So for cancer, cancer risings, this is about home. The world, so you are ready, if you're a cancer or cancer rising, to renew your relationship to family at home to reinvigorate that also you might be having a big year for real estate that's starting now home and real estate there might be an opportunity to move 
you might be leaving a group of people you used to connect with because you're ready to move. So it's sort of like some goodbyes, but I bought goodbyes because you're also changing tribes because you're moving on energetically. So there's something big for you there in terms of like moving on literal physical location and people who is a cancer or cancer risings big evolution there for you. Hmm. Kristen's a cancer who just moved. Okay. And when I always think about moving, I think about expanding the basin of your life. Like in as far as, well, where you establish your root system, you take the plant out of the pot, put it into the field, and you can grow a great big tree then. You're going to expand your base of operations, cancer. All right. Who are my cancer cancer risings? Good to see all of you in the room. I love seeing your names show up here. Makes me so happy. Because you know what? I see names I've known for so many years too. Okay. All right, folks. Who are the Leo Leo risings in the room? Good. I see double Leo here. So for our Leos and Leo risings, there's so many of you here. Whoa. <laughs> this is like a Leo party. <laughs> oh my God. They keep coming. <laughs> I can't believe all of you. Maybe all the Leos just want to announce themselves. Okay. Um, this is on your axis of communication. So funny enough, I'm a Leo rising and I just shared that story with you about 2005 and 2015. So perhaps something similar is going down. Now, this is an opportunity for you to communicate in an entirely new way with the world. This could be like, you start writing, you start a podcast, you start writing a book, perhaps you start producing um, yourself on video, or you start working or teaching, um, sharing information, impregnating consciousness in a new way. That's what we're talking about. There might be some sort of also significant contract or agreement in relation to this. Yep. In order to do that, though, you will need to release in the 10th house, meaning that you have been running, in a way, the music of your life, the business, the professional sphere in a certain way up to now. And it feels with Jupiter and Uranus and, you know, the lunar eclipse, there's something quite ab abundant. There's been a lot going on and there's a lot of opportunity right now professionally. That said, you almost need to, um, say no. You need to close the door in order to create room for a new way. You need to you need to make a sacrifice. You can't do everything, Leo. We can't invite every, everybody, everything, and have all the buffets in the world at the party. We have to say no to one thing to make more room for the other. And so this could be turning down one professional direction to say yes to something that really has your name on it. Okay. And that new thing that has your name on it involves you communicating in a brand new way. Does that resonate with any of you, Leos? Sandra says, yes. Karen says, thank you. Leos, please share. I want to hear your stories. So many Leos are connecting to that. Share your story, please. Oh my God. Tammy, Kathleen, amazing. Okay. Let's talk about you, Virgos. Meanwhile, feel free to write if you're a sign that I called out before and you want to share your story. I would love to see. We'll save the chat. Alrighty. Alrighty. Virgo time. Virgo sisters, Virgo brothers here in the room. Um, you are ready to take your talents more seriously and start earning more money from them, Virgos. You are ready to start building upon what you know, charging more or or perhaps expanding your sense of your skill sets. When you expand your skill sets, you might also increase your revenue, but you're adding on new things. And this feels very exciting. You're getting into new territory. Go for it. Um, at the same time, you have Jupiter and the eclipse in your ninth house. So you might be saying, okay, I'm done with this chapter. You might be traveling a lot this year. There could be a big trip for you or big adventure, something you complete in the fall. And that punctuates a whole chapter in your life. 
you are ending a whole chapter of learning and incubation around late October. And you're going to fly after that. You're going to fly into new directions. Okay, Virgo, that's what I got for you. Virgo sun, Virgo rising. Who are you? Oh, I love these Leo stories. You Virgo suns, Virgo rising. Yes, you're shifting how you do business. Exactly, Virgos. Completely. You're starting to be more strategic and focus on what you really want to do. Some Virgos are starting to teach. Yes, your ninth house is awake. Big eclipse there. You're getting out. You're teaching more. Now, Virgo, perhaps. Um, Tara, a Virgo, just in announced rate increases. Virgos are expanding their business. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, and Tammy just signed a contract with a podcast guesting company to promote Mathnasium. Congratulations. Um, so a lot of you are really expanding here, your work and your reach, Virgos and Leos. Beautiful. Um, we'll move on to Libras, okay? Libras are the, <laughs> the main eclipse sign here. Like Libras, the eclipse, you're housing the eclipse. So Libras are so focused on how everyone else is doing. You are so beautifully conscientious of the whole world around you. Now, this solar eclipse in Libra is just like, hey, Libra, go big, be you. This is your time to actually put yourself first. That's my challenge for you, Libra. Put yourself first. Be interested in yourself. And take up more space. Because the world wants your colors. The world wants to receive your light. And I think this has a lot to do with you expressing your truth. You expressing more of who you are without feeling ashamed, without wondering what, oh, should I be helping them instead? No, you should be helping yourself right now. This is your time to really shine bright and step into what you desire without any guilt. Okay, Libra, you got that? That said, you're going to need to release, release this other um, financial story. You're going to do fine financially this year. It's like, I mean, there could have been some fear you wanted to save up for the family or this or that, you know, actually Libra, you have Jupiter there, Uranus. I see money coming in. I see you're going to be fine. I think you need to invest in yourself. That investment in yourself will go a very long way. I see you investing very well, perhaps late October, investing in yourself. Um, And I see Jeannie is like saying the husband is Libra and he's been dealing with moving the family money from one country to another. Yes, it's a real eighth house thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Libra, Libra, Libra. Okay. <laughs> A lot of Libras here too. All right, Libras, you have some homework. Let's see, how are we doing on time? It's 311. Yeah, we're okay. Yes. All right. And thanks for sticking around. I'm like, you all are really you all are such troopers here because i think it's important that you all stick around too for signs that are not your own because um you might want to give a message to your friends or family or partner you know and that's what i like to do just write things down to share with them as well find out their their suns and risings um and also i will mention it again right now quick commercial break that our beginner's class starts in a week. Beginner's Astrology, Master the Birth Chart, where you will learn how to read birth charts and become a professional astrologer and get certified if you so desire. It goes until mid-January and starts next week. Use code ECLIPSE, code ECLIPSE, to get an extra course that I want to throw in with it. Okay, moving forward for Scorpios, Scorpios. We are dealing here, Scorpio, with the mind-body axis. First of all, it is saying that it's really important for you to take more space, to take more time for yourself, to take more time for yourself, um, not necessarily doing things, but being in your imaginal realm, um, because that's where everything starts. Like if you want things to happen in your life, you actually need to spend more time thawing out on the feeling of what that thing is, is once it's happened. Your energetic body needs to 
get up to where your physical body is. And right now it's not. So this year is saying that, okay, take time, Scorpio, to allow your emotional body, your mental body, and all the parts to kind of connect to where you are. This might be a meditation retreat. It might just be more of a meditative practice in your life. Creating more silence and spaciousness will be key for you. Your intuition will enhance a good deal this year, Scorpio. Now, Scorpio, you have gone through a lot in relationships over the last two years. This is actually a really good time for you right now, Scorpio Sun, Scorpio Rising in relationships. But if you have been holding on to something that is not in alignment, you know, you're just ready to release the grip. It is a lunar eclipse in your partnership sign. Late October, if it's not working, it's time to release. There, you know, if it's like, you're going to know this, like, you know, your name. That said, if things have been going really well and you just met somebody, Scorpio, perhaps you're getting engaged or married. Like this is a great year for partnership, but it's a great year because you're going to let go of what is not in alignment very quickly, if that's the case. All right, Scorpio, are you with me here? It's a very Scorpio situation there. Um, Wendy, start working with an energy healer. Great. Yeah, our Scorpios need to spend more time in the imaginal realm. You think about all the great inventions in our punt. They happen because people use their imagination. You have to get out from the doing things a bit to play and explore in sort of like a non-linear um, way that's not goal-oriented. Yeah. Um. You're already very strategic and all that. There's some things you're just going to do in your sleep without trying. You got to give yourself more space, Scorpio. Okay. Um, but what I think is really interesting too, just like a side note for all of you, is that Pluto's going into Aquarius right after eclipse season. And that's going to be another big game changer for all of us. So we can talk about that. Maybe I'll do another live in the beginning of 2024 about that. All right. Sagittarians, Sagittarius, Sagittarius rising. So what we're going to see for you, Sag, is this bright new eclipse, this bright new fresh start for you. I love it so much in the 11th house. It's saying you've been, you've been working really hard. You've been doing so much. It doesn't have to be such a, a struggle. Now it's time for you to align with the people who are like your tribe, who you want to collaborate with and work with in the future to form some alliances and community. Connect to your deepest wishes and the things you want to birth into the world. Then connect to the people who also want to birth those kinds of things into the world. This is time to not focus on the shoulds for you, Sagittarius. This is time to focus on what are your dreams? What are your true desires? And meet the people that also align with you in those dreams. That said, Sagittarius, if you've been like, Ha if you've been having a health issue that's been really hard to figure out for quite a while, you're going to find out everything you need to know and resolve that right now. This is a great time for resolving health issues that have been going on for like two years. Um, everything coming up to the surface that you need to see, letting go of old habits and getting into better health. That is also a big theme for you. Um, a better kind of flow of the day. Yeah. That's what I got for you, Sagis. All right, we got a few more signs to roll out. I love hanging out with you all here, and I will, you know, pop into the Q&A after two already. Our Capricorns are having a really big career year. The eclipse is at the tippy top of your chart, the sector of fame and honors, inviting you, inviting you to step up. Not a lateral move, but up out of what you have been doing. And notice that there is a bigger horizon here. We don't have to stay in routine just because we've been doing it, Capricorn. This is an opportunity to actually start a brand new career, or maybe you get a promotion. But hey, if you want to start a new career, this is your time. At the same time, Things are going to really show up for you in love. You're going to find out exactly what you need to know around October 28th. Maybe somebody will reveal their love to you. 
It could also be a very good ending of something that's been going on in love. Either way, it is clearing the way. It's burning up the crops to clear the way for you in love at the end of October. That could be happening now, too. All righty. Claudia, thanks so much for joining us. Okay. Cappy's in the house. Let's talk about Aquarius. Aquarius time. Okay, Aquarius sun, Aquarius rising. All right, you all are in for perhaps the biggest like change of the century because Pluto's entering your sign and that hasn't happened in 246 years. Oh my God. <laughs> like That's a really big deal, Aquarius. Yeah. So you're going to have that happen in January fully. But that said, what I see happening for you, the big eclipse is lighting up, lighting up your ninth house, meaning the area of publishing, broadcasting, casting a wide net into the world, expanding your reach. Um, this is a great year for you, Aquarius, to kind of start getting your information out there into the world. Perhaps you teach, perhaps you travel, and you impregnate consciousness in new ways. So exciting. Maybe you're even going back to school and learning more too. I could even see you going to move, be bicontinental. You have a great year to like move to another country, move abroad, um, explore a new place. Maybe you've already done that. Um, but you're going to have this really kind of key moment with your family around the end of October that's going to bring up a lot of things that were maybe under the surface before. So it can be quite a healing time with your family of origin or with the family you have. That's showing up around October 28th, maybe around September 28th as well. Who is Aquarius and Aquarius raising here? Yes. Um, beautiful. All right. Last but not least, our Pisces friends in the room. Who are my Pisces here? Pisces sun, Pisces rising. Share your Pisces love in the chat. Hey, Michelle, good to see you. Um, Great to see everyone here. Alyssa Snow, I love my Pisces. I have an extra soft spot for Pisces. Okay, I know I'm not supposed to have favorites, but like I'm opposite Pisces, I'm a Virgo. So I just kind of like connect, like we see eye to eye because we're opposites. Um, So it's always fun. Yes. <laughs> Good to see you all. Okay. Um, we'll start here, Pisces, for you. Hold on. Oh, yeah. You know what? I'm going to put the solar eclipse. Hold on one second. Um, the solar eclipse was supposed to be here. It's fine. In Libra. So, Pisces, this is very much going to be about your um, your community and um, to a few things here. Actually, hold on one second. You know what? I just can't stand this because I have to make a little correction on the Pisces slide. I don't know why that happened. Let me just come out of this and fix something. You're going to see all my secrets here. Something I just needed to correct. Oh my God. What happened? <laughs> okay. Something went wrong on your slide. We'll come back to the show. All right. That was a quick commercial break. So Back here, Pisces. The first thing that's showing up is a new pattern with finances. Um, you're extracting yourself from old social situations. But yes, you are really entering a new financial realm where you're realizing that you can materialize your visions. Since 2012, you've been housing Neptune. Since 2012, you know, 2014, you've been a quite a visionary and creative. Now with Saturn in your sign, you're ready to manifest on a large level. So much that you're also willing to invest. Maybe you invest in your next venture. You invest in yourself. This is a new financial beginning. There is really this room, this space to be quite resourceful. And maybe you garner seed funding on a project or something like that. But you have all the space in the world now to materialize your big visions and to invest. Uh, maybe money comes into your world and you invest it well. There could be a contract around late late October that you're finalizing. You sign off on a very fortuitous contract, and that's that. This could be the end contract, a sign off on a long time situation in the end of October, maybe the end of September. Um, 
that's what I got for you, Pisces. It's really good, actually. It's good financially. It's good for contracts. And it's taking your visions more seriously, giving them more gravitas and weight, moving them through the world. That's what I have for you folks. I mean, this eclipse cycle is such a powerful one. I hope you all got a lot out of this today. And again, beginner's astrology class starts in a week. If you want to be certified, please hop in. If you don't, you can still take the class without the certification. Um, I do want to mention here, I'm going to be hanging out for a little while after to go through some of the Q&A that you have been writing. I'm just going to see what's listed in the Q&A um, and I'll go through those as well. And to answer your question about beginner's astrology, yes, there are live classes with me. There's office hours. There's weekly mentor groups. You'll meet an astrology mentor who's been an alumni with our school. You'll have actually three different mentors and you can get certified. So all of this, all of this begins, begins, begins in about a week. And you can see we have just amazing, amazing um, testimonials on that page too. So you're also going to get moon magic, which is a whole other course I offer if you use the code eclipse for that now, 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 how are you all doing? Did you all learn a lot about eclipse season? How is everybody? How do you feel about eclipses? Is everybody ready for this? Yes. Good. <laughs> Take time. I recommend take a walk today. Let it all sink in. Take a bath, take a walk, give yourself time. You know, consider these larger 18 year cycles. This is a big karmic renewal review period. Yes, there will be a replay and all of you will get the replay as well. And you can, I know you all love to take notes and listen to the replay that will be happening. Um, Oh, some people I haven't seen in this chat since 2006. Amazing. Thank you all so much for coming. I'm going to hop into the Q&A right now and see what's in there as well. Hold on one second. I really appreciate you all hanging out with me for this long and sharing such beautiful comments and insights. 